Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Chris Winter and today I'm gonna to take an in-depth look at and review the brand new Canon 80D. Now make sure to subscribe as I'm gonna be giving away either a Canon 80D or a Sony a6300 to a subscriber. And if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my top 10 list of the best cameras for under $1,200. The Canon 80D makes the list but isn't at number one. So make sure to check it out and see what does come in at number one. I'll put a link in the description box below. So let's start this review by first taking a look at the build quality of this Canon 80D. Now I've been testing the Canon 80D out for a while now and felt pretty comfortable using it pretty much straight away. And that's because the body itself hasn't really changed that much from the old 70D, which is the camera that I've been using for the last two or so years. Now there are a few things that have changed on the camera body though. The buttons on the back of the camera are different and feel a little easier to use. They're a little bit more pronounced and you know, this is nice. They're also round now, which is a little bit different. Now the body itself is actually really quite nice and it does have a really good grip to it. Now it's not a super heavy body like a Canon 5D or a 6D, but it's also not too light like a Rebel series camera, so you can put a rather heavy lens on it. Now on the side of the camera you'll also notice a new port, and that's the headphone jack, which is something I'll talk about a little bit later. But overall I find the build quality of this Canon 80D pretty much just right, and I think it's around about the sweet spot for a good size of a DSLR. Now if you want to see over 30 sample images that I've taken with the Canon 80D, I'll put a link in the description box below and you can check it out in your own time. Now when I first heard about the new Canon 80D, one thing I didn't think that would change was the menus, but they have. It's a little bit more compact now and it's using kind of a new tabbed system rather than the old system. And you know what, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to it, but it does seem pretty easy. Now fortunately it's not too overloaded with options, especially for beginners if you're just getting started with the camera. But if you do put it into manual mode, you definitely do get a lot more options to play with. Now one of my favourite features on the old Canon 70D was its touchscreen, especially if you're going to be using autofocus, and I'm pleased to say that the Canon 80D is just as good. Because the Canon 80D has such fantastic autofocus, having the touchscreen really makes things easy, especially if you want to do some nice focus pulls. Now I use the touchscreen feature in pretty much every video that I make, and it allows me to do those rack pulls which you see every now and then. Now of course the 80D screen is also articulating and it's something that I couldn't live without now. Now being able to move the screen out and flip it around, it's actually something I never thought that I would use, especially on a DSLR, but it's actually become something that I use all the time, especially for someone like me who films my own videos. Now it's also a pretty big LCD screen, especially compared to a smaller camera like the Sony a6300, and that's something that I like. It's definitely one of the strong points on this camera and it's probably one of the best LCD screens I've ever used on a camera. Now one of the things about the Canon 80D that I've been incredibly impressed with is its autofocus and to be fair I was a little bit skeptical about just how good it would be when I first heard about it. And that's because the Canon 70D's dual pixel autofocus was so good. But Canon have seemed to be able to make it a little bit quicker and also a little bit more accurate. And another feature that I don't use a whole lot is being able to actually focus in stills mode using the LCD screen, something that I'm sure a lot of beginners will actually like. Now it is a very snappy autofocus and when you pair it up with one of the dedicated Canon lenses, I've got to say it's actually really impressive. And I've even used it with my Sigma 18-35 f1.8 which I'm using right now to film me and it worked even pretty well with that as well. Now the Canon 70D was one of the most popular DSLR video cameras for the last two or so years and that's because the dual pixel autofocus was so damn good. But to be totally honest, I thought the Canon 70D was lacking a few video features. Firstly, it could only shoot 60 frames per second in 720p video mode. Now, I'm not a huge fan of filming in 60p, but the Canon 80D's got it, and I've got to say, I was pretty impressed with it. Now, if you want to see how the 60 frames per second looks at 1080p using the Canon 80D, I'll put a link right here and you can check it out for yourself. Now, I also didn't really expect the dual pixel autofocus to be any better than the Canon 70D, but you know what? It is. It's a little bit quicker and it's a little bit snappier and just being able to pull focus using the touchscreen on the back is really, really cool. And it's actually something that I didn't think I would use a lot, but I have in the end. Face tracking works good as well, but I did find that it did struggle a little bit if you're gonna be wearing a hat or if you've got some sunglasses on, so be careful with that. Now to be fair, the Canon 80D is lacking in one feature and that's shooting in 4K. It tops out at 1080p. Now there are a lot of cameras these days which are shooting 4K and they're shooting them really well. So it is a little bit disappointing that Canon 80D isn't shooting 4K, but it's not really like I expected them to put it in. Although it is only 1080p though, the video quality is pretty nice, and I think that I'll be definitely upgrading to the Canon 80D from the 70D for my videos in the future. Now although it's pretty small, one of my favourite inclusions in the new Canon 80D is this little thing on the side here, and that's a headphone jack. This is something so basic that's been missing from a lot of Canon DSLRs for so long, and it's great to see it in. 
Now being able to actually listen to your audio rather than just looking at the levels on the screen is huge and to me is worth the upgrade in itself. So my recommendation is if you're gonna be doing a lot of video work, the Canon 80D is definitely worth the upgrade. So the Canon 80D is still using the LPE6 batteries and I've gotta say, battery life is very good. So compared to some other cameras that I've been testing lately, and some from Sony, the 80D has been a real winner and these batteries are also so cheap these days that it's totally possible to pick up a few of these batteries really quite cheaply. So overall, I've been really impressed with the Canon 80D and I think it's gonna be an incredibly popular camera this year, especially for video users. Image quality is very nice, especially in good lighting conditions. And if you pair it up with a nice wide aperture lens, it performs great. Now, it's certainly not the best DSLR you can buy, but it does perform well, especially considering the price. Now, I'm not huge on megapixels, but having 24.2 megapixels is really quite nice and it does allow you to crop a little bit if you wanna do that in post. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with the Canon 80D. I think I'm gonna be using this as my main camera in the future. Now make sure to subscribe if you wanna go into the draw to win a Canon 80D or a Sony a6300. And also make sure to check out my top 10 list of the best cameras for under $1,200. I'll put a link in the description box below. Hope you all have a fantastic day. See ya.